Welcome to A-Frame Lesson 2.3. In this video, we're going to see how we can animate objects. In doing so, we're going to explore a concept called recursive loops. So let's get to it. So to orient you to our world, uh, I got the basic template, but I've added a dodecahedron as a rock, uh, as an idea of rock. And I've also added a plane with a picture of lava. So let me show you what that looks like. So our motivation here is that we're going to have the rock rotate and come at us in the world, as well as rotate the plane to make it look like uh, moving lava. Let's go over to our JavaScript. And the first thing we need to explore uh, in order to make all this animation happen is that we need some kind of a loop. Now, if you're familiar with programming, uh, you might immediately think a while loop or a for loop. And those could work, uh, but I'm going to show you a different approach to it, uh, to creating this loop. And that is to create what's called a recursive loop. So a recursive loop involves functions. So I'm going to create a function called loop, which I'm going to fire off when the window loads. Now, realize this is just the name of a function. The fact that I call the function loop does not inherently make this a loop. What makes this a loop is the next part that I'm going to type. So in JavaScript, there is a function called setTimeout, which lets you call a function after a certain delay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to call the loop function after 10 milliseconds. So let's explore how this works. So on load, I will call the function loop. It will have some code in here. And then as the very last statement, I'm going to call the function loop again after 10 milliseconds. And then it'll do the code again, and then it will call itself again after 10 milliseconds, essentially creating that loop. Now to explore this and to see that this is working, let's create a variable called a, and let's initialize it to zero, and let's simply increase that value by one each time. And let's display it to the console. Bring this over a little bit. All right, so you can see here in the console, the value of A is increasing uh, quite fast. Remember, this is 10 milliseconds, which in another way of saying it, it's a hundredth of a second. So in one second, this code is executing roughly about 100 times. Now, we're not here to display numbers. We're here to animate things. So let's comment this code out. Uh, let's just run it because I don't want to keep seeing it here. And let's go ahead and get that rock. Let's use document query selector. And if you recall, query selector uses the CSS syntax for retrieving elements from our web page. So you can see here that the Dota Dectahedron has an ID of rock. Now, if you're familiar with web development, we could have used document get element get element by ID here. But again, I like the query selector. It's so much more powerful because it's one function that lets you grab things in many different ways. So again, if you're familiar with CSS, uh, to grab an element by its ID, you would spec specify the hashtag first and then the ID of the element. So this actually grabs us that dodecahedron, that element in our HTML. In our loop now, we're going to use the set attribute function to change its rotation on, let's say, let's just start with one axis. So we'll leave, actually, we'll make the A the one that gets changed. I mean, the X the one that gets changed. And we'll leave the other ones stable. All right, so let's take a look at it. And there, you can see that it's rotating on its x-axis. Now, to have some fun, we could simply also have it rotate on the y-axis. So let's take a look at that. And now it looks a little more dynamic, where it seems like it's rotating on you know, many different axes, which it actually is, uh, and almost rotating out of control. Let's do the same thing for the A and just explore, explore how that looks. 
Again, you can have a lot of fun with rotation. So now let's handle the idea of motion. So if you kind of you know, notice that we're doing something with a variable to change over time, well, guess what? We also need something for position. And because we're only going to rotate, uh, have it come in into us, we're going to work with just the Z axis. So we're going to create a variable just for the Z position. And let's initialize it at negative 10. which puts it further into the world. And now we're simply going to increase the value of z by a certain amount. Now, I'm not going to use the value of 1, because uh, if you kind of think about it, this code is executing about 100 times in a second. Now, if I increase the value of z by 1, this is quickly going to go from negative 10 to uh, you know, over 100 within a second. We're not even going to see the rock uh, move towards us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a small value. Let's see what 0 0.01 does for us. And let's not forget, I'm actually going to do a little copy and paste, save us a little bit of time. And so at this time, we're going to use the position attribute. We'll leave x at 0. We'll put y at 2. And we'll put this at z. Now, some of you might look at this code and say, well, it's z colon z. How is the computer going to know which one it is? If you notice when I highlight the z after the colon, it knows automatically that that's the variable we're working with. The z on the left side is the key value to the JSON. So again, it, there's no confusion there. But if you do feel that this is uncomfortable, you could always rename this variable to something else uh, and then replace the right side uh, with that variable. All right, so let's see what this looks like. Hopefully it doesn't overwhelm us in terms of its speed. So you can barely see it, but the asteroid, as we can uh, call it, it is coming at us. And for a split second, we're going to be inside. Uh, and then it's behind us. So I'm actually going to turn around in the world just to show you that it's, uh, it's still traveling in that positive direction, kind of going further out into the world. All right, so let's try one more example of this idea of animation. Uh, and for that, what I'm going to use is the plane. Now, unlike the dodecahedron, I have not given the plane an ID. But we can still use the query selector to retrieve that plane. Reason being, it is a plane. So let's create another variable. Let's say lava. And because it's a plane, we can grab it through the element. Now, we can use it with just a query selector because we only have one plane in our world. Uh, so you got to be careful when you use query selector in a particular type of element uh, in your A-frame scene because, again, if you have multiple versions of the same one, you, not, you might not be able to actually target the one that you want, and that's where you may want to use an ID. All right, so let's... You know, let's try to use the same A value that we're using for the rotation of the, of the rock. So let's say lava. I'm actually going to copy this one here. Now, because this is a plane, I'm going to leave this at negative 90. And let's just rotate on the Y axis, which essentially will just spin it. So let's see if we got our thing. Let's try it out. And there you go. Now, again, this might be a little bit too overwhelming on the senses. Um, it's basically because the, uh, the plane is moving so fast. So let's see what we can do to kind of slow that down. Now, one suggestion could be to create another variable and have it move at a slightly different increment than the one rotation for the, uh, for the asteroid. What I'm going to choose to use, I'm going to keep the same variable and just realize that if I maybe divide this by, let's say, 5, I will have smaller values uh, for rotation. Again, if you need some proof of this, um, again, you could take the same code and just do a console log of a divided by 5 as compared to a, and you'll see that a divided by 5 does smaller increments. So you can see here the plane's definitely rotating slower. Again, if you want to go divide by 10, it will even move even slower. We got the Asteroid rotating, it's coming at us, coming through us. We're inside the asteroid. 
uh, turn it around. We survived, and the asteroid's going uh, towards the other end of the world uh, to crash into whatever's there. All right, so this is animation. So let's go back to our presentation and let's review what we've done. So in this video, we explore how we can animate objects um, by using a recursive loop. Though we only explored the position and rotation attributes, honestly, you can animate any attribute. Uh, again, if you think about opacity, uh, you can make things fade in and out. If you decide to use the scale property, you can make things grow and shrink over time. So really, at this point, it's all about your imagination. So hopefully you're excited to animate things in your own world and enjoy.